Hi, Gemma's mom. Hello. I painted this earlier today, so I'm going to try and loosely recreate this. Another holiday card. So I'm going to start with the top of the tree and use winter pine from KMS. Kind of find the center of my paper here, this card. Adding some thin lines and then instead of pointing them upwards, start pointing them towards the side. Trying to keep it a bit even, but not thinking too hard about where everything is going to be. This is pretty much how I always make my pine trees or evergreens. If you leave some white spaces, it almost looks like there's snow on them. And it sort of ends up looking like a triangle. Then I make my way towards the center. All of this is done with a round six brush. And add a little bit of a darker color towards the center. And then I'm going to splatter bit of tree topper. I want to get it done pretty quickly because then it's going to start drying. So this is tree topper, very appropriately named. And that's it. I think this is going to be one of my top designs for the year because it's simple, it's easy. I can make a bunch all at once um, and it still looks really cute. So I don't know how long exactly that was, but it didn't come out too dissimilar to the one I did earlier. There they are. I have one more design that I'm going to show you today. <laughs> Thanks, Freddy. It's going to be metallic, and I have one extra piece that I'm going to need. I have this little pudding jar that I'm going to use for the circle. You've probably seen this before to make bubbles, or you can use a cookie cutter. Thank you. Yeah, that tree was really pretty. and. I took a long time before I could figure out exactly how to make the tree that I loved, um, and I think that's it. So last year, I actually ended up painting a little mini card for each one of my students, and one of them was like a little a wintry scene where I had three or four trees, and so I got really good at practicing those. So what I'm going to do is take that tree topper and coat the top of this jar. It's going to pill up and it's not going to go on smooth, but the idea is I'll have a nice guide. You'll see in a moment. So I'm going to use it as a stamp and now I'm going to go in with a little bit of extra tree topper on my brush and this is going to be the shape of an ornament. I'll show you that design as well. This one I actually was inspired by um, a card that I saw it was a two color metallic 
from an artist in Germany. I don't remember the name. I don't, I don't even know if there was a name associated with it. But I saw it and I thought, I have so many metallics I can pick two and do a similar thing. So leaving a little bit of white space around it. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more concentrated tree topper in some areas. Dab it in. Okay. I'll do that with another color. This is a set of all metallics from KMS. She's got so many pretty ones. I'm gonna use space blue as my second color. Same jar that I'm going to plop into my water jar just to rinse off some of that tree topper and add in the space blue. I didn't get off all the tree topper and I'm fine with that because I'm going to have all of these colors mixed together anyway. So again, just in some places all the way around and make this one a little bit lower. That's good enough. I'm just using it as an outline, an imperfect little outline with lots of water. Join it together. You could be much more precise if you were going to do this yourself, but I'm keeping it very loose. Do another one in blue over here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more space blue. This time I wanted to go over the fold. This would be a cute way to make some planets, a little galactic painting. Especially with this color palette of space blue. tree topper for that. I'm gonna give the top a tiny little rinse in my water jar. I'm not even going to dry it. I just realized my nails match that. <laughs> Meant to be. I actually did paint with cookie cutters last year. I had one that looked like a moose, 
One that looked like a tree. It was really fun. So depending on how loose you like your watercolor, you'll like the next step or you won't. I'm gonna add some splatter. And then I'm going to add the little ornament hooks in gold. So what you could do is every time you created one of these little ornaments, you could add a little splatter so that it would bleed because if you wait too long it's just going to dry so these two will have a little spread here since it's wet and then very distinct little dots on that one because it was dry okay next step I'm going to get my gold this is my go-to gold. I've used it so many times and there's hardly a dent in that half pan. And so I'll make very simple <coughs> additions depending on where I want them to face. loop so that one is done. Have this one face this way. A little hoop. And that one's done. Part is done. That didn't take too long. And I'm going to show you the one that I did earlier. Came out pretty similar. In the first one that I did earlier, I had this tree topper still wet, and so the bleeds of the space blue were more pronounced. Um, just a really shimmery, pretty card. And I love how that gold dries. It almost looks like gold leaf. So that's what this one will look like. I think I added some splatter of gold on top of this. So let me do that before I forget. And then I could put those off to the side. Depending on the size of your brush, you'll have larger or smaller splatter marks. Size six is what I used and I think it's quite nice. Okay, another card done. <laughs> now for some florals. Okay, so I didn't finish my sketch in ink in time for this. Um, I did a little pencil drawing. The brands of paints for the tree and for the ornaments. I used KMS for everything except that final step of gold. So the tree is just two colors. It's winter pine, so that green is just a little bit more water in some places. And then the sparkle is tree topper, which I used in this one as well. Tree topper was a color from her advent calendar last year, so she might release that as a holiday special this year. 
Um, and then the other color that I used in here from KMS was Space Blue. She's got a really cute palette here that you could choose maybe Jade. Jade would be a pretty one even for the tree. There's Bronze, which would look good as well. I was thinking about doing Bronze. Um, so there's lots of options in here. You could do a Mint and Soft Violet combination. That would look really pretty. So if you would like to try out KMS, I actually do have a discount code, and that's um, Palacios Paints. That's it. That's 10% off your order. Um, I just use them a lot, so she gave that to me. I don't get any money for that, just a discount for you. So these are the greens. Um, I got Winter Pine. The March collection, every month she's got um, a set of 12 colors that she puts together. So a whole bunch of greens that I like to use, yeah, for florals, for um, special things like that. So there are lots of cute ones. And there's a mix of um, shimmers and mattes, which I appreciate because I like going through the mattes. Um, so for this, this was a little bit different. My plan was to use um, these paints right here. These two colors are made from hollyhocks. These are bolder color paints. So I was gonna use these paints to paint some hollyhocks, along with some other colors. But I'll try and stick with just these colors from bolder colors. I did a quick little sketch in pencil. Um, and that was based on some hollyhocks that my mom had in the yard last year. So, trying to find my eraser just to pick up some of the pencil marks so that doesn't all become visible at the end. That'll just give me a guide. I'll do it in sort of a loose fashion with my watercolor and then I will add ink to it later. So I'll give it some ink details. But this is just so I know where my centers are, what position the flowers are gonna face. And so I'll keep it very loose. Um, as for my brush, I have some options. I've really been loving this pointed oval brush. So that could be fun and different. Um, for this, I might use my largest round, which is an eight. So I've got this one that I'm leaning towards. And then I'll go in with the greens at the end with something uh, a little bit smaller. So I've got a purple and a blue for the hollyhocks. I'm gonna use both. And I'll start at the bottom. Just loosely outlining where the petals are. Adding in some blue. Letting them mix. I really like that purple. And then they have that center. So I'm going to kind of let that dry a little bit, move on to another petal, another little bloom. Apologies for all the dog hair that you probably see on the edge of my brush. <laughs> Zena is shedding. loose style and then I'll go in with some ink once it's dry to give some definition I 
And then this one I have pointed away. So I'm going to want to add some green at the bottom, maybe have it bleed into it. So for the rest, I'm going to try and work a little bit quicker. here. Bud. Hi, Virginia. First time. Thank you for joining. I think one in here that I've got. go back to my Princeton 6. I'm actually going to grab this palette, Vampire Protection palette. I love these greens together. Thank you, Autex. I really appreciate it. And I hope Kyle gets here so that he sees this. It was his idea for hollyhocks today. And I just happen to have paint made from hollyhocks. These are hollyhocks. They, they sort of look like delphiniums too any really stocky type of flower. I'm gonna add in a whole bunch of leaves as well to fill up the spaces in between. My goal, if you are just joining, is to add some ink after this is dry for some definition of these petals. Um, sometimes I will have it inked in advance and then just add watercolor on top, but I just ran out of time today. And I still wanted to go live at the same time because I know a few of you really like joining me for the whole process. I'm thinking about where else I'd like my leaves. I'm really looking at it. Hi, Kashmir. Okay, I think I'm gonna start from the bottom. Have some come out here. Like they're peeking out below this petal. Again, not supposed to be following exactly what the petals look like, the, the leaves look like. It's loose. They're just here to act like a frame for the flowers. And also to hint at what the flower is. 
<laughs> I asked that, Kashmir. I really hope he joins. How am I doing so far? I still have to put the centers in. I'll go in with another layer of color, giving it some definition, some folds. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, some more little leafy outgrowths. Adding greenery is just my favorite part. Really fills it out. Okay, so we've got a tiny little leaf here, thinking maybe another one that's gonna pop out here. And then maybe I'll get into the um, centers. I think a little dab of yellow. Let's get that in there. And this also helps you identify how they're facing. Okay, I think that's it for my visible centers. They get dark towards the center as well, so I'm going to grab my plum. That's a darker blue. And I'm gonna drag this color out, but just to start hinting at where I want my shadows. Oh, that's the bolder colors. Yes. I'm definitely not bold when it comes to my watercolor florals. I think I do go for, oh, that was my dog. I think she found a fly. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, Holly. You're an artist too. What's your favorite thing to paint? Or, or do you have another medium that you use? Oh, Ashley's here too. I, I probably have to scroll back up. I must have missed a few things. <laughs> hey there. Very happy that I'm painting and happy to see you here. Um, I think I'm going to go in with some really saturated purple and blue and start adding some details now. You paint, draw, and just create. Oh, birch tree, that sounds awesome. Crest Hill, Illinois, welcome. I should probably introduce myself. Um, I'm Leia, and I'm a chemistry teacher who really loves painting. I've tried gouache, but my heart is with watercolor. This is my third year painting with watercolors. Oh yeah, for me, it's, it's really recent. Um, I did love art when I was a kid, but I don't even think I... I used watercolors. Um, I always loved my art classes, but then I went the science route. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, this is my therapy after work, painting some flowers and a hobby. Now that it's summer, I don't have to think about work and de-stressing, but I still do a lot of it. 
yes, <laughs> chemistry teacher. I even went to grad school for chemistry, physical chem. I'm a Taurus. <laughs> Watercolor and acrylic, very nice. Oh my gosh, yes, I also hope for kind hearts. Just being open and um, willing to try new things, try scary things together, because I know that's what chemistry is for most of us. <laughs> color choices well you know it does make me think about color in a different way um, not just like oh purple is around 420 nanometers or something like that or my 800 nanometers I'm getting towards orange but um, the colors of flowers and and where that comes from I think about that uh, you can make pH indicator from crushing up the petals of flowers, like even poinsettia, you can do it with that. So you can make your own paints from lots of different flowers. That's what Boulder Colors does here. So it really is a combination of art and chemistry that gets you paints sometimes. Hola, Raphael. B, you can, you can do this. You can do this. It does take practice. Tina, what are your favorite flowers to paint? Oh, I love roses. I think roses, peonies. Um, what else? Things like lilacs. Do you have any favorite artists that you follow for tips and tricks and things like that? I know a few of you have said you're, you're beginners or you're sort of intermediate. Who do you like to learn from? trying to be present here as often as I can um, while I have time in the summer. See what I'm doing right now, I, I typically wouldn't do this. I would add some definition with ink later, but I figured I'd try something new with you all here since you're having such a great chat with me and with each other. So this is just an experiment. I don't typically um, layer like this. Um, B, beginner classes. I know there's Jenna Rainey and Emma Lefebvre on YouTube. They have awesome series um, for, for beginners, sort of where to get started how to start thinking about painting flowers, if this is something that you like. Thank you. you know, I, I have led watercolor instruction before. I taught to in-person workshops um, and have a little bit of experience teaching on Google Meets and virtually. So I was thinking about doing some, some lessons, like a, a little bit more personal instruction, maybe later in August. A 
Oh, Virginia, the, the names of the artists to look out for. That's Jenna Rainey. She's got lots of in-depth um, watercolor tutorials, just like how to mix colors, um, colors to put together, um, how to break down and draw shapes. She's got an excellent class that's all on YouTube that's free. That's Jenna Rainey. And then Emma Lefave, she does a lot as well. If you wanna DM me, I can send you links to their YouTubes. Um, or you can look yourself and, and let me know if you have any trouble. But I am also really liking where these hollyhocks are going. And I would have only done this because I'm live with you. So, to thank you. Really, I'm just stalling so that... Uh, Kyle gets here because he's the one that suggested these yesterday. <laughs> Maybe I'll paint another card with you. Or I'll show you a few things that I've been painting. Okay. So, I think... I think I'm gonna kind of leave that where it is right now. Um, I do maybe want to add a little bit of darker green and give it some detail, but I love that the hollyhocks are the focal point with that little bit of definition, those lines. So maybe I do just want the greenery to fade back. I, I love how that came out, so thank you. Um, the paper for this. It's one of my favorites to practice on because it does have a, a nice texture to it, but it is relatively inexpensive. 20 sheets, approximately eight, nine dollars. Um, so you can find the link to this on my Amazon favorites that's in my bio if you want to try it out. This is my absolute favorite one to practice on. So I do that almost every day. First, grab some of the cards I did earlier in this live. So I'm on my quest to get all of my watercolor cards for the holidays done as early as possible. So these were, you should put your work in your class. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Let me show you some other paintings that I've done. One for the chemist. There's an avocado little illustration, and then the molecules before and after are the molecule that's responsible for the are uh, the green color of the avocado, and then with exposure to oxygen, it turns brown. This one, one of my most recent favorites, um, poppies, buttercups. This is available on my Etsy account. This is the only thing I currently have listed. Let me see. Birch tree makes Victorian and antique wreaths for Christmas. Oh, that sounds amazing. This is Strathmore watercolor paper. This is hot press. This one is my favorite paper. This is from Bao Hung. I'd say this is on par with Arches for me, if you know Arches. Just a few things that I've been working on. Some magnolias. Something I painted live with you recently from another live here. And we have a landscape. Don't do many of those. Thank you, Diana. Some soft florals. This is pretty much my style right here. 
the magnolias that was actually from the flower color guide it's a book that has a lot of beautiful photographs of all different types of flowers there's a series going on a, a watercolor challenge with emma and crafty fox that's jillian boone that is hard to say um an artist that i identify with the most for my style i i don't i i can't even begin to to nail that down um the watercolors that i started with were windsor and newton the cotman tube series and i stayed with that for about a year i still have a lot of those initial tubes that i i painted with um, because then i switched over to getting watercolors from handmade artists so most of the colors that i use now like this this is from kms um it's cherry pie so we've got really sweet names and a bunch of colors that i love Oh, Bob Ross is amazing. Yes, that's a good one. This is something that I'm trying to finish. I'm going to do a molecule associated with watermelons, probably the smell of, water, of uh, watermelon. Another in my chemistry series of floral molecules. Let's see. I do love... <laughs> it's, it's, I'll finish it soon. Oh, you painted hydrangeas yesterday. Yes, gold, well, gold makes everything better. Um, I love adding ink to my, to my watercolor. So sometimes I'll add watercolor to ink, like with these pansies, or ink afterwards. Um, let's see. It's another one with ink. Hydrangeas, I think the best YouTube tutorial is from Sweet Season Art or Sweet Seasons Art. Her name is Chris. I'm I follow her on Instagram and she's got a great one for them. Another one that I recently painted here on TikTok. Yeah, definitely DM me later. <laughs> I didn't want to say cachete. I I I, I don't speak Spanish as well as I can understand it, so I'm not going to try and switch back and forth. <laughs> but trying to look at some other art that I've done. This is very similar to the hollyhocks. I really do like that little bit of extra detail, though. And I'm so sorry that... <laughs> that, um... Kaya wasn't here for us, so I'll have to make this into a video and post that. But thank you all for joining. I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, and I really hope I see you all again in another live. I paint pretty much every day here at 4 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for all of those likes, the sweet comments, and really starting to feel like we're a little community here. The frequent viewers, yes. I'll see you soon. <clears throat> Thank you, Birch Tree. <laughs> it's very sweet. Yes. Hope you all can come back. Um, so have a great day. Exactly. See you next time. Thank you, Kashmir. Oh, you were way too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Much love to all of you. Um, if you can't give me a rose or, or anything like that, just a heart is enough. A, a nice comment saying hi is really enough for me, but I appreciate that so much. Yes, have a great day. Bye, everyone. <laughs>